Welcome to another edition of Healthy Perspectives, a production of the American University of Antigua College of Medicine. I'm Dr. Edmund Mansour. Today we have a very special guest, someone who spent more than 30 years treating medical conditions around the Caribbean. And I'm very pleased to welcome Professor Sir Trevor Hassel to this program. Welcome to the program. Professor Hassel is president of the Healthy Caribbean Coalition, a former adjunct professor of the Cave Hill campus of the University of the West Indies in the Faculty of Medical Sciences, and a former consultant physician and cardiologist at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Professor Hassel, I'm sure over the last many years you've treated all types of diseases, but you have a very special interest in non-communicable diseases. How prevalent are these in the Caribbean? We know it's a big problem, but you've spent a lot of time in this area. Yeah, these are, these are particularly uh, prevalent in the Caribbean. In fact, uh, the estimates now are that some, you know, the situation now exists that some seven of every 10 persons in the, in the Caribbean die from a chronic non-communicable disease or an MCD. So when we speak of NCDs, what we are really referring to are really just simply four diseases, uh, cardiovascular and cerebrovascular diseases, uh, diabetes, cancers, and chronic lung diseases. So th this group of diseases represents a major challenge in the Caribbean, as I said, accounting for seven out of every 10 deaths in the region. How much progress have we been making? We've been hearing about NCDs for the last 30 plus years. How much progress is the Caribbean really making? Yeah, the, very disappointed, I must, I must confess. Uh, there's been lots of efforts that's been uh, made in trying to address these issues, but the issue is one that requires a whole of society approach. They are essentially lifestyle related diseases, triggered as they are by unhealthy diets, by physical inactivity, by exposure to tobacco smoke, and by the, the abuse of alcohol. So these are all lifestyle-related illnesses that very often are more common um, in situations in, in which uh, there is a lack of empowerment, poverty, and similar uh, situations. I'm sure there have been successes along the way, however. What are, what are some of the successes? We know of the challenges, but what have been some of the successes in the treatment of NCDs, let's say, in the English-speaking Caribbean? Yeah. Well, first of all, I think the first success is a general awareness of the problem. Uh, I think most people in the Caribbean are now aware that, in fact, this group of diseases uh, produce significant disability and death and also are really a challenge uh, to the development of, of the people of the Caribbean. I think we have made uh, some progress uh, in the field of uh, control of tobacco. Uh, Caribbean countries have uh, signed on to the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, and some countries have in fact um, put in place enacted legislation uh, appropriate to the mandates of the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. Many countries in the Caribbean are, are in fact among the lowest in terms of prevalence of, of, of uh, smoking uh, of, of cigarettes. So that's, that's, a, that's something that we can be encouraged uh, uh, by. There's also been an improvement in the uh, identification and treatment of hypertension, although I must confess we've still got a, a long way to go. In the, in the other areas, we are not as well, uh, we have not progressed to the extent that we, I would like us to, be, to have progressed. You make reference to alcohol as um, one of the um, areas, or alcohol consumption as one of the areas where we haven't made any progress. But when I think about the plethora of calypsos that are promoting alcohol use and the calypso art form as it were is part of Caribbean civilization. What is your view on the types of progress we really should have been making by now when it comes to alcohol consumption, sir? I, I think you've, you've, you've touched on one of the most challenging areas uh, and one of the most significant risk factors, if you will, for the chronic diseases. 
And, and it's challenging for many reasons, and you have, you have articulated some of them. You know, it's very interesting that um, one of the seminal events in the prevention and control of, of NCDs or chronic diseases in the Caribbean was the heads of government of CARICOM summit on NCDs in 2007. Now, uh, they issued a 13-point uh, declaration around chronic diseases. It's interesting that alcohol was never mentioned. I don't think it was intent, the abuse of alcohol, that is. I don't think it was intentional, but I think what it says in a, almost in a subliminal way is that we have come to, we in the Caribbean have come to accept alcohol as, as almost a way of life. And that in itself is not bad, but the, the problem is the abuse of alcohol. And we are, we are challenged in the effective uh, tackling of, of this particular risk factor because of several factors, not the least of which is our historical realities, the fact that, uh, uh, the byproducts of, of alcohol, the, of sugar and alcohol itself is a, a foreign exchange earner in some of our countries. Uh, but having said all of that, it, there still is no excuse for the fact that throughout the Caribbean, there is no policy that speaks to the abuse of alcohol. And this is something that I think governments of the region need to address. There needs to be a policy that addresses the issue of abuse of alcohol. I am aware that you are the president of the Healthy Caribbean Coalition, and I wanted to get your reaction and your views on the role of non-governmental organizations in promoting health awareness and health consciousness, and more specifically, maybe you can tell us of some of the work that the coalition has been successfully undertaking. Sure. Well, the Healthy Caribbean Coalition was born out of, if you will, the heads of government of CARICOM Summit. And the reason for this was this that at the summit and in the preamble to the declaration, it was stated that there was need for a multi-sectoral approach to the chronic non-communicable diseases. There, in fact, was need for a whole of society approach. And what this means is that there was need for not only government to be involved uh, in the prevention and control of NCDs, but there was also need for engagement of the private sector and also civil society. However, uh, at that point, 2007, there was no regional civil society uh, NCD alliance uh, available and in place. And so therefore, uh, the Healthy Caribbean Coalition was formed. Now, this is an alliance of, as, as I indicated, um, uh, health NGOs and non-health NGOs and, the, as I said, the civil society in general. So, for example, trade union movements, universities, faith-based organizations, youth groups. Uh, these are all members of the Healthy Caribbean Coalition. And our role, that is civil society's role, is really to advocate, to advocate for action. Our role is also to provide information, to be involved in chronic disease monitoring and surveillance. These are all critical uh, components and initiatives that are, that are needed if we are to effectively address the epidemic of, of uh, non-communicable diseases. And so uh, the Healthy Caribbean Coalition uh, has been, uh, in its own way, playing a, a role uh, in these areas. For example, uh, very specifically, we played uh, some little part, I dare say, uh, in the, uh, the recent um, uh, imposition of an excise tax for sugar-sweetened beverages uh, in Barbados. And the reason uh, that we were keen that, that, uh, that this should be done is because there is a, uh, we've got an epidemic of obesity uh, in the Caribbean among our children, among adults, uh, which is contributing significantly to diabetes and heart disease. And an important component of that is the high intake of sugar. 
And so this is but one example. We have been engaged uh, in many other initiatives. There's another initiative that I, I want to share just to show how civil society is able to, to contribute to drive in a process. One of the concerns of many of us is that in the Caribbean, uh, cervical cancer continues uh, to result in death among many of our, many, many of our, of our, of our, of our women. And this is a highly preventative uh, condition, a highly preventative cancer. Uh, civil society can play a role in advocating uh, for further action to be taken. And for example, the Healthy Caribbean Coalition, uh, we last year launched a petition, an electronic petition, in fact, in which we garnered uh, several thousands of signatures from the people of the region uh, in which we were, we, in that petition, we requested of our governments of the region that they needed to address the issues uh, uh, more significantly. But there's another area I wish to mention, and that is, as I said, we, we have identified a multi-sectoral approach uh, to the chronic uh, diseases, and so private sector uh, is critical to that. Uh, that, that process. Civil society and the Healthy Caribbean Coalition has a role in assisting, shall we say, encouraging civil society in playing its role. So for example, you might ask me, well, what kinds of roles do I think uh, the private sector should play? Well, the private sector has a huge role to play in this whole issue product reformulation, uh, things such as uh, not, not influencing children by, by marketing unhealthy products to them. And so the list goes on and on. So we all know that a large component of the outreach of the Healthy Caribbean Coalition um, speaks to the issue of behavioral change. And I want to get your opinion and maybe your, your thinking on the role that social media has been playing in ensuring that the behavioral change message has been reaching Caribbean citizens. Yeah. This is such a fascinating question. And um, uh, it is interesting that M Health and E Health is one of, in fact, the strategic goals of the Healthy Caribbean Coalition. And it's one of our strategic goals because we, we recognize uh, that this provides a, a unique opportunity for influencing a behavior. Uh, as of now, however, we in the Caribbean have not really maximized this particular opportunity. And uh, I think this is certainly a challenge going forward. The prevalence of hypertension in the Caribbean is reportedly between 15 to 18 percent. I am very certain there are several people watching this program who probably had hypertension for many years. As a leading Caribbean cardiologist and as a, a mover and shaker in changing people's behavior towards chronic diseases, what message would you have for those individuals? Okay. I think first of all, know your number. Every adult in the Caribbean should know what their blood pressure level is. That's the first thing. Second, if you have been found to have elevated blood pressure, if you have been found to be hypertensive and you have been started on treatment, you should consider and appreciate that unless you're informed otherwise by your doctor, you should take that medication for the rest of your life, every day. And I guess the third point I wish to make is that uh, a major contributor to blood pressure levels is sodium or salt intake. And again, if you're hypertensive, you should quite definitely reduce your salt intake. In addition to that, there's a close association between overweight and obesity and hypertension. So that if you are overweight or obese, you should then reduce your weight. And finally, and I'm, I'm not giving these in order of importance, uh, but finally, physical activity. I cannot uh, over, 
emphasize, if you will, the importance of physical activity. Not only does it, does it contribute to weight reduction, uh, but it also, perhaps even more importantly, it contributes to a significant sense of well-being and improves one's mental health. So there is much to be done uh, if one uh, has hypertension or one thinks one might have hypertension. Great insights. Thank you for sharing those with us. I've been speaking with Professor Sir Trevor Hassel, who is president of the Healthy Caribbean Coalition. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. 15 minutes is never enough for these topics. No, no, 